SCP-1001 Object Class Euclid Disruption Class Vlam Risk Class Danger SCP-1001 is a single plant apparently belonging to an undescribed species of Wellwitzia. Unlike other Wellwitzia species, it has a tree-like trunk which broadens into a woody taproot 180 centimeters wide and 5 meters long, 2 meters of which protrudes above the surface. Also unique to SCP-1001 are its leaves, which are up to 6 meters long, lined with barbed prickles, and capable of secreting a sticky, pitch-like resin, and which are capable of motion with considerable dexterity and strength. SCP-1001 is geographically disjunct from its known relatives, having been found in the Andean High Desert near Peru. SCP-1001's trunk and taproot are hollow, opening to a rounded aperture at its apex, and filled with a highly caustic solution of hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes, comparable to those found in the pitchers of Nepenthes species. The solution is capable of reducing 50 kilograms of soft animal tissue to a thin slurry within 20 minutes of submersion. While it is capable of photosynthesis, SCP-1001's leaves are singularly inefficient, producing only approximately 50% of the plant's caloric requirements. Likewise, its roots are unusually ineffective at uptake of organic and mineral nutrients. To mitigate this deficiency, SCP-1001 is an obligate carnivore. It uses its prehensile leaves to capture passing prey and pull it into the central cavity where it is digested. SCP-1001's intelligence is highly deba debatable. Its basic hunting tactics resemble those of Paralichthys species, flounders. It buries its longest leaves in the sand and waits for a sufficiently large animal, at least 40 kilograms, to pass by. Whereupon, it emerges suddenly and captures the passing prey. When this tactic does not produce results sufficiently quickly, however, SCP-1001 resorts to sophisticated audio mimicry. It is capable of re reproducing literally any sound it has ever been exposed to, as well as recombining known sounds into novel phrases. It has been observed using the latter capacity to lure human prey, speaking in the voices of other humans known to the prey subject. Its means of sound production are unknown. Also interesting are SCP-1001's prey preferences. It prefers to consume intelligent animals, especially those capable of tool use or of building artificial structures. Humans are always its preferred prey, but in their absence it has accepted primates, dogs, parrots, pigs, beavers, ants, and nest-building birds. Note that many of these, ant of these species fall well below its usual size threshold. Some to such a degree that capturing and digesting them produces a net energy loss. Its method of detecting intelligence is unknown, but apparently not based on experience, since it has attacked squid and small dolphins with eagerness comparable to its attacks on humans and Andean monkeys. SCP-1001 is incapable of digesting hard tissues completely. The bones of its prey are gradually excreted through channels near the top edges of the caudex. Once excreted, these bones are invariably picked up with one of the object's leaves and moved to a location on or beneath the soil surface surrounding SCP-1001. The object arranges the bones in complex patterns which are demonstrably useless for water capture and, being primarily subterranean, do not aid in attracting prey. The resemblance to the Nazca and the devotional mandalas of SCP have led Dr. Glastonbury to hypothesize that they may be representational or even anomalous effects. At the time of its discovery by the SCP Foundation 18 
SCP-1001 was located at the center of a roughly circular bone pattern 18 meters in diameter and 8 meters deep, percent of which was composed of human bone. Nearby native tribes professed religious fear of the object and were proving it providing it with regular human sacrifices. The sacrificial ritual, as finally divulged to Foundation interrogators, required attendant priests to escort the sacrifice towards SCP-1001 along a strictly delineated avenue, later found to correspond closely to certain features of, su of the subterranean bone pattern. Deviations from the pattern were said to be punished by capture and consumption of the attendants as well as the sacrifice. But a successful ritual resulted in only one person being taken. In rare cases, a priest would be directed to move a particular bone to positions just outside the object's reach, where a placement would be rewarded either with an unspecified gift or a longer reprieve before the next required sacrifice. Oil histories state the ritual to have been originally demanded by the tree itself. Spoke in the voice of our special containment procedures. SCP-1001 is to be kept at Biosite-103 in a greenhouse reinforced as per Dangerous Organisms Protocol 12A. It is to remain rooted in the soil core 9, mil 9 meters in diameter by 4 meters deep in which it was removed from the site of discovery. It is to be watered and fertilized sporadically, as detailed in Document 1001-2. No object capable of producing hazardous sound, sonic weaponry, audio-based mimetic effects, high decibel infrasound, etc. is permitted within hearing distance of Biosite 103. The object is to be fed 20 kilograms of nutritional supplement 1001-R-8 once monthly. The precise formula for nutritional supplement 1001-R-8 is detailed in document 1001-2, but it bears repeating that the supplement's protein content is not to be less than 40% by mass, and that all protein is to derive from pigs, dogs, or comparably intelligent species. These guidelines may be altered as necessary when testing requires that SCP-1001 be hungry. Bones, horns, and other hard tissues are never to be provided except as part of duly supervised tests. All tests involving provision of hard tissue are to be pre-approved by both Dr. Glastonbury and the current security director of Site-103.